Can ChatGPT beat Wall Street? Today on the AI Breakdown, we are talking all about AI and finance. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. So today we're talking ChatGPT, AI, and finance, and this was inspired by a growing conversation I'm seeing around how ChatGPT and other AI tools might be used to help people make money, right? And not just through content creation or some new type of side hustle, but actually understanding markets. Where I wanted to kick off is with some research that came out last month and that really got people excited. So Brian Romley here tweets, ChatGPT picks stocks and performs better than anyone expected. 500% returns. New University Research uses some of the systems I have been testing. Just the start of a new powerful way for anyone to prosper. The paper that Romley is referencing is called Can ChatGPT Forecast Stock Price Movements? Return Predictability and Large Language Models. It was posted on April 10th from two researchers at the University of Florida, Alejandro Lopez Lira and Yahua Tang. Basically, what the research did is it used AI to track sentiment analysis and then map that to potential financial decisions that you would make based on the news. So, for example, if there was a negative story in the news, that might prompt the model to short a stock, whereas if there was positive news, that might prompt the model to buy the stock. So here's how they describe it in the paper. We assume that if a piece of news is revealed before the market close, we buy or short sell a position at the market close price. If a piece of news is announced after market close, we assume we buy or short sell a position at the next opening price. All the strategies are rebalanced daily. The portfolio that they found performed the best was a portfolio that bought companies with good news and short sold companies with bad news. That's where that 500% return number came from. Now, of course, this was just research. This was all theoretical, but it wasn't the only study to show something similar. On Friday, May 5th, CNN posted a story called ChatGPT Can Pick Stocks Better Than Your Fund Manager. The study they're referencing this time came from financial comparison site Finder.com. Between March 6th and April 28th, a dummy portfolio that they had ChatGPT power of 38 stocks gained 4.9% as compared to 10 leading investment funds, which over the same period of time had an average loss of 0.8%. Now, what if you had just bought the S&P 500? Well, the S&P 500 would have outperformed those funds as it was up 3% over that time, as again, compared to that negative 1% or so. But the theoretical ChatGPT fund at 4.9% again beat that 3%. So how did ChatGPT actually make those selections? Here's what Finder.com asked. We asked ChatGPT to create a portfolio of stocks from high-quality businesses with criteria taken from the leading 10 funds it is competing against. These include things like low levels of debt, sustained growth in the past, and assets that generate an advantage of competitors. With that criteria, the stocks that ChatGPT chose include everything from NVIDIA to Johnson & Johnson to PepsiCo to Cigna to Berkshire Hathaway to Salesforce to Walmart. Now, the other really interesting part of this Finder.com study was just about how much people knew about ChatGPT in general. They asked people if they trusted AI for financial advice. Of the respondents, 8% said that they had already used it for financial advice, 19% said they would consider using it for financial advice, 35% said they wouldn't consider using it for financial advice, but the biggest portion, 38%, said they don't know what ChatGPT is. Hard for those of us who are creating content around this space to imagine, but it's still the norm for people not to necessarily have a good sense of what these technologies are. These type of ChatGPT portfolios are starting to pop up everywhere. One that has gotten a lot of attention is the GPT portfolio by Autopilot. This came after that CNN article we mentioned, and on the website it says, CNN says ChatGPT can outperform your money manager. We're putting that to the test publicly. Now this comes from the same folks who built the Nancy Pelosi stock tracker and the Michael Burry stock tracker and the Warren Buffett stock tracker, which is a company called Autopilot that does, well, exactly this. It helps people understand how other people are investing their money and effectively copy trade them. On Friday, the GPT portfolio wrote, the first week of GPT managing our $50,000 is officially in the books. Pick some winners like Broadcom and Amazon. 9.5 million successfully invested alongside it. Didn't lose all of our money. Next week, ChatGPT will sell these and pick a new set of 20. In terms of actual numbers during that period, the SPY was up 1.1%, while the ChatGPT fund was up 1.4%. You've also got other individuals like Udit Genka who are doing this type of experiment, and Streamlit developer Data Chaz who pointed to new ChatGPT plugins as a way to help your investment journey as well. He writes, trying out the excellent portfolio pilot ChatGPT plugin. 
Here are eight great stocks to invest in, according to it. Let's see where that takes me. If you are a ChatGPT Plus user, at this point, you should be able to enable browsing as well as plugins. I did a quick search today, and I found that of the 130 official plugins so far, seven of them are related to stock news or market information. That's over 5% of the official plugins. Of the financial plugins so far, it certainly seems like Portfolio Pilot is producing the best results. When I asked what's today's most important stock news, it was able to actually call news from today, as opposed to some of the other plugins which had news from all the way back in March as some of their top news today. Now, I think so far the most interesting thing about ChatGPT plugins for finance is not so much that they're going to have great stock picks or that they're even going to be the best way to aggregate and curate news, but that presumably over time they're going to allow you to get really deep on research from a much easier interface. If you're interested in hearing more of a comparison of the existing financial plugins, let me know in the comments and I'll think about doing that as another video later this week. I also think that we're going to see a lot more specialized plugins coming soon. Right now, all of these plugins are kind of ticker data and market data and focused on news, but YouTube CS Dojo just tweeted recently, I created a ChatGPT plugin that can help you read and summarize dense financial documents, used it to make better investment decisions. One of the big things that's anticipated to change about GPT in the months, if not weeks to come, is that the context window is expected to expand from 8K where it is now to 32,000 tokens going forward. A larger context window allows more information to be pulled in, so you might see a use case like reading big, complicated financial documents like 10Ks to get better results because there's more context for ChatGPT to see the entire set of information all at once. The other thing to discuss in terms of AI and markets isn't just whether it will help people make better stock picks, but whether it in and of itself will be a boon to the markets. Over the weekend, Reuters published a piece called Artificial Intelligence Gives Real Boost to U.S. Stock Market. The article reads... The S&P 500's 9% rally this year has been driven by a handful of the index's biggest stocks, a number of which are at the center of the AI frenzy that has spread in the wake of chatbot sensation ChatGPT. Five stocks, Microsoft, Google Parent Alphabet, NVIDIA, Apple, and Meta Platforms are responsible for the S&P 500's entire year-to-date return. About 25-50% to 50 of those gains are owed to the buzz around artificial intelligence. Society General also did an analysis of 20 stocks that are widely owned in AI-related ETFs and found that removing those stocks from the S&P 500 would have reduced the performance by about 10 percentage points, which would have put stocks in negative territory for the year. By the way, the assets under management of those exchange-traded funds has grown about 40 percent this year. There's also a longer-term optimism about AI in Wall Street as well. Goldman Sachs strategists recently estimated that generative AI could create productivity gains that expand S&P 500 profit margins by four percentage points in the decade to come. Deutsche Bank said in a note, We are strongly of the view that AI will change the world. And that note, by the way, was called, Will ChatGPT Prevent the U.S. Recession? Veteran market analyst Ed Yardini even said that ChatGPT might ignite a, quote, roaring 20s for stocks. In a recent note, he said, The market has climbed a wall of worry thanks to Wall Street's worriers, who've predicted that the banking and debt ceiling crisis could make their widely expected imminent recession worse. But when it comes to AI, he says, This may be the event that launches the roaring 2020s. If so, then we can spend a lot less time obsessing about what the Fed will do next and focus on how technology is boosting productivity and the standard of living throughout the economy. Hedge fund billionaire Paul Tudor Jones recently said something similar. Last week, he said, I think the introduction of large language models and artificial intelligence is going to create a productivity boom that we've only seen a few times in the last 75 years. Those productivity booms that he identified were the 1950s when the U.S. invested in its infrastructure, the 1980s following the rise of the PC, and the 1990s with the introduction of the Internet. He said each of those three episodes were associated with productivity gains of somewhere between 1 and 3%. Let's say that this large language model is going to give us productivity boom of 1.5% over the next five years, which I think is possible. I just go back and look historically what that's done during those productivity miracles. You've had the stock market on average appreciate 15% per year, you've had inflation come down, and you've had a PE expansion of somewhere between 1.5 and 2. Now, whether that actually happens or not, in the meantime, there will be tons of funds giving people access to the hype. One of the examples comes from Roundhill Investments, who last Thursday announced the Roundhill Generative AI ETF, ticker chat, which they claim is the first generative AI focused ETF. Anyways, guys, to be clear, none of this is financial advice. I think anytime you have everyone running in the same direction in markets, it's worth being wary of. 
But there is no denying that people are understanding just how significant AI is going to be, even if the specific companies might change quite a bit from where things are right now. I personally am not ready to outsource all of my investment decisions to ChatGPT, but you better believe I'm trying all of these new plugins to see what actually can help me analyze data and make decisions better for myself. As I mentioned before, if you're interested in a deeper analysis of the ChatGPT finance plugin so far, let me know in the comments. But for now, that is it for today's AI Breakdown. If you're enjoying the AI Breakdown, please like, subscribe, and share. Go check out the podcast. Go subscribe to the newsletter. You can find all of this information at breakdown.network. Until next time, guys. Peace.